Hey everybody, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center uh, checking in. How's everybody hanging in there? Well, the uh, <clears throat> pardon me, global pandemic hasn't uh, affected you in uh, too uh, much of a bad way. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about something called cut and sew. Cut and sew is basically stuff that's not made out of felt, not made blocked on hat blocks, the way we make our felt hats. Cut and sew could be a cloth hat, a suede hat, a leather hat. It could be a hat made out of uh, linen or cotton, wool, tweed. It could be a cap. They're basically made the same way a tailor makes a hat, you know, sewing and stuff. Cutting pieces of fabric, sewing them together certain ways. Totally different craft from, you know, making a hat like this, which is made with a big piece of felt called a hat body, sort of a big disc, stretched over, you know, some shapes and stuff, you know, like wooden blocks. It's a completely different craft. Now, what happens when somebody brings in a cut and sew hat for me to steam up, to reshape it, or to clean it? There's the rope. Basically, that's why felt is good. Felt, you could just buff out the top layer of felt. You could kind of like some bird droppings or fingerprints, whatever. Sandpaper, you just very carefully, it takes a little technique and some experience, but you, you buff it out. Um, it's not that simple, not just sandpaper, but that's essentially what you're doing. You're taking off the top layer of felt. It's no big deal. It can be done as long as it's no, not really deep. Um, now, as far as reshaping it, again, felt can be reshaped. These other hats, no. It's not a lot you can do. Um, so we're going to get into all that and stuff. And that's basically the reason why you know, felt is so awesome and why you see so many felt hats. And you don't see leather cowboy hats. Um, you, you know, they exist. There's companies dedicated to them. But, you know, the real authentic stuff, Stetson, this and that, it's felt. It's all done with felt and straw because those are materials that you can reshape, you could clean them, you could steam them, you could customize them. They're rainproof, um, not the straw, but you know, somewhat. And, um, but you don't want straw to be rainproof, it be too hot. Um, so the lesson here is basically there's a good reason why things are made out of felt and straw and not leather cowboy hats or cotton hats instead of uh, straw hats. Why are they all made out of this stuff? Um, because they're very lasting materials that you could bring to your hatter. And just like getting a free shoe shine, you could walk into um, JJ's and we'll refurbish your hat free of charge for life. It's like buying one pair of shoes and getting them shined, refurbished over and over for life. And we do that. Um, any walk-in comes in with anybody's hat, not just our hat, we'll steam it for free. Okay. Now, you know, after this COVID thing, you can do it also through mail order. Right now, it's tough because we have a very small scaling crew there. But if you're watching this in the future, then we've, we've survived COVID and everything. And um, you can bring it in. You can uh, mail it in to us. But right now, yeah, we have a couple of our youngest people work in the shop. And they're handling mail orders. They're chasing the UPS truck. And they're you know, running the shop. And, um, Kudos to you guys. You guys are frontline heroes, really. Risking your own health so people can get their hats and stuff. Um, basically, and I mean that too, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, what I'm getting at here is, I don't know, I think it's just time for me to take a touch. So, the Reverend is here. I'm going to try a new effect to have on the, uh, the M5 here. So it's, it's kind of a Zappa like effect. <laughs>
picture. Um, let's get it on. All right, cut and sew. All right, that's going to include basically stuff like. No, let's open the window now. A little bit. Let's get it. A little stuff. Okay. Cotton sew is going to include cloth hats, like wool and tweed. They're cut pieces of cloth. They're seams right here. There's a piece here. There's a piece here. And there's a piece here. And they're sewn. You know, they're probably done inside out, so all the sewing is done on the inside. And then they line it beautifully so you don't see any of the sewing. Um, cut and sew hats are made so completely different from these hats, I have no idea how to do it. I know with a cap, there's something called visor board in here. It's generally made out of either cardboard, or if you're buying like a really good Irish cap, some of those are plastic, uh, like the Tully, the Gatsby, the Kerry, um, the Snap Cap. Those are four Irish caps that I know that have plastic in there. And there's a couple of Alfonso caps that had foam. You could ask about them. They're pretty rare, but we do have some foam crushable, you know, uh, peaks. They're made so differently. I really don't. I've never seen it done. You know, there's sewing machines, obviously. You know, some kind of like really big industrial things. You know, I'm sure they've got like that little pattern that I showed you on the top. This this thing. I'm sure there's probably like a stack of a million of those. When they take one take the other, you know. So, I have no idea because when people come in, I don't know how to fix hats like that. There's not a lot I can do. Um, what we can do for, let's say, a leather hat or a suede hat is I just put it on that steel, um, kind of like a, what do you call it, steel hat stretcher that you see me in front of JJ Steamer using all the time. It's almost like a cylinder. And I put it over there. It's a cylinder with a round top. I open up the hat. Sometimes I'll just take some uh, stiff brush. Just brush the suede. That's all I can do. Um, I don't even use the steam. Steam can burn the leather. It can take the finish off of it. It can definitely takes the finish off of it easily. It can also um, shrink it. It can do so many bad things. It'll make it look cloudy. So you don't use steam leather. Um, don't steam suede leather. I mean, it might do nothing. Um, I wouldn't take the chance. Definitely not on a leather with like a shiny finish. Suede, it might be a little bit, you know, just beat up suede or something. It'll just get dark from the, uh, the wetness of it. But, um, yeah, just brush, like a really stiff, stiff brush. Like one of those wiry kind of, you know, plastic ones or something that's like a, really stiff. And you just brush it and keep going and going and going, you know, forever and ever. Eventually the hat starts to look better and you just put the creases back in and bam. There's not a lot more you can do. You can try steaming them, you know, pushing the brim and doing some stuff like, you know, straightening out the brim or, or whatever. Most of the time they don't really respond. Um, some hats that are made out of like wool and things like that, they might respond a little bit, but essentially what steaming does for those hats, it's like steaming a t-shirt or steaming your clothing it gets the wrinkles out. So that's what you're doing. Steam goes through the cloth. You can rub it from the inside with your fist, which might, you might get burned. I usually take a, uh, a big ball of tissue and I hold that big ball of tissue paper or paper. And from the inside, I take the ball and I just kind of hold it, and, you know, on the inside. That way when the steam's coming from the outside, it doesn't burn your hand. You you have that tissue in between. So I'll do that sometimes. Um, essentially, cut and sew hats, there's not a lot you can do with the steam at all. And really, there really isn't. Um, again, that's why we wear so much felt and so much straw, because most of the straws, the felts, they have a kind of a, a spray called sizing, which is like a stiffener. And that stiffener essentially is what you're working on when you steam it. Um, you're melting that little plasticky hard sh shell for a second. Then you're manipulating it. You say, okay, I want this to happen. You hold it in place while it dries and it stiffens. Basically, that shell dries again, cools, and gets hard again. So, um, 
you, you need that shell on the outside, that sizing, for it to really work. And straws have them, um, felts have them and stuff. Some hats don't really have, like, you know, light felt and stuff. Um, light felt is very soft, crushable, and it almost never loses its shape. So, steaming is usually not an option, unless you really dog the thing, you know, like, every day for a long time. And, you know, it's common. Most of us do. A lot of us do. So, maybe not a lot, but a good portion of people do, you know, like a, I don't know, a percentage. So, light felt, yeah, there's not a lot you can do, really not too much. It'll respond slightly to reshaping, like it could do something like tighten a pinch, maybe lower the crown a little in the front, you know, um, possibly straighten your brim like a tiny bit, but without that stiffener, it doesn't do too much. Uh, the process is basically the stiffener hardening and softening, hardening and softening, and you manipulating the hat, you know, in between. So that's when you bring your hat to somebody, some teenager, and they're steaming in, and oh, it's not working. The steam alone does nothing. So if the hat is already stiff and, you know, the stiffener's not worn out, you're reconstituting the old stiffener in the hat. Yeah, it'll work. But if your hat's all soft and floppy, the steam alone does absolutely zero. It doesn't do anything to it. Um, I don't know, maybe it'll kill a couple of germs or something. But, um, you gotta spray it first, you know. Spray it with some hairspray or some felt uh, sizing stiffener. You could use scout stiffener or whatever you got. Um, Manhattan Co. I think sells it. And, um, if you're gonna spray, you gotta make sure you cover up the um, sweatband. You don't want anything to get on that. Cover that somehow. And, I use a big ball of tissue in there sometimes, or a hat jack. I hold it as a handle too, kind of like this. I hold the hat jack, and the hat jack will cover this side and this side, the wood pieces. So that's that's enough where I can spray the underside of the brim, and most of this is covered. Um, you could stick something inside there, like a huge ball of tissue, to cover the leather. Spray it. The thing is, when you spray, you got to clean it first. You got to take packing tape it down, make little rings of packing tape, get the edge here. It takes a lot, a lot of tape, um, lots of pieces and patience. You think you got it and you don't, you know, there's a little hiding in here or, you know, here or on the bow or something. Tape it down and use a million pieces to get every single speck of dust off because if you're going to spray it, all that dust is going to be held under that clear spray forever and there's no way to get rid of it so you're purposely making your hat dirty on purpose you're sealing it all in but on your little glass window you know so yeah take a lot of time to dust your hat use you know tons of that tape packing tape good packing tape don't use masking tape or some you know lazy thing get the real stuff you know it's gonna cost you a few bucks whatever three dollars if you do it right and um clean your hat spray it sure it doesn't get on the leather. Try not to get it on this band too. You can spray the top part or something. Spray here to one your side. Um, don't worry about here if you think it's going to get it on the ribbon. Don't spray the ribbon either. Do the underside. You know. That's the brim is usually the problem. I like the underside anyway when I spray. Um, other than that, you got to let the coats dry in between and then you're stiffening your hat. Now, can you do this with a cut and sew hat? No, you really can't. Um, I've tried. You can put a really thin misting of hairspray on something, but it's got to be thin. Like, spray the air and just run the hat through it or something. But um, it, it messes with the texture. It starts to feel weird and cardboardy and scratchy and bad. So, yeah, there's not a lot you can do there. Maybe, um, you know, you can use some steam alone if it's a cloth hat and see if you can get a little bit of results. Um, generally, one good trick with cut and sew is you take the hat, you stuff it with whatever you've got, you know, tissue paper, cellophane, any kind of stuffing you got from boxes like that, those big sheets of like foam, you know, like that thin foam stuff. It's kind of like tissue paper made out of foam. You stuff that in there. Get it all in until this is mega, mega tight, you know, like totally tight. You don't see a single wrinkle in there. You see a little wrinkle, like, okay, here's a wrinkle there. You see one single wrinkle, it's 
stuff in entire, you know? Get as much tissue as you can. After that, you're going to have to make these creases. So if it's a little too stuffed, you might have to take a ball or two out, but make this crease, and make these two creases. They'll usually fall right into place. Okay. And what you're doing is you're making yourself a little artificial kind of a hat mold kind of thing. Stuff it, okay? Take the hat down, then you can steam it. Give it a good steaming, like, uh, I don't know, if you got a kettle or whatever you got. Steam it out. Straighten your brim in the meantime. Okay. Let it dry. Completely dry. Um, almost like getting it in the rain, in a rainstorm. Stuffing it up into a hat block and letting it dry on. So if you don't have steam, you can probably take a water mist bottle, you know, like a, one of those uh, Windex bottles, a clean one, spray it with some water or something, a little mist, not tons and tons, you know, just like a light mist, so the hat kind of, you know, is, it's wet, you know, you don't want just a tiny little syrup, you want to get the thing wet. Um, I'm talking about cloth here, so this is going to probably be fine for your linen, your cotton. Give it a little nice misting so it's got a little kind of a dewy covering on there. Let the thing set. Don't let it set in the powerful sunlight or something. Just let it set someplace. You could even put a fan on it if you want. That won't hurt it. Um, but no heat. Um, and that's it. Uh, you could even repeat the process, you know. And um, you can reshape things without steam too. If you've got a, you know, something that's wrong, go the opposite way. So if this is coming up and this is coming down, I go the opposite. That goes down, and then it's straight. It's not working. Straighten it out. More. Generally, all this stuff will work without steam. Um, that's really about it. Cut and sew is is cool stuff. Um, generally, the better stuff, like the, the better tweed caps and everything things that come from you know, Harris Tweed, Irish Tweed, nice Italian stuff. They're going to be fine in the rain, fine in the snow. Don't put it near heat. And if your room is super hot, don't put it in a super hot room. Put it in a nice cool room to dry. Put it down on a towel, basically this way. Get everything smooth, kind of like that. Okay, that's the shape you want it to be in. On the towel, shape anything you can, get out some wrinkles, and that's it. You could uh, flip the towel over or move it to dry spots or something like that, but no heat. A fan is okay, I don't think it's a big deal. You know, if you're in some kind of rush, but yeah, I don't see you know, why you wouldn't do Thank you.